This video is part two of a two-part series. Make sure to watch part one before watching this video. In the previous video, I described how the player could use emetic poison to sabotage someone's meal, which could damage their relationship with others or put them into a vulnerable situation. However, emetic poison isn't the only type of poison available. You can also acquire lethal poison. Currently, the only way to do so is through InfoChan. More methods of acquiring lethal poison may become available in the future. You can't put lethal poison into Senpai's food, but you can put lethal poison in Osana's food. This will kill Osana immediately, allowing you to eliminate your first rival before lunchtime is over on the very first day of the game. However, choosing to eliminate Osana in this fashion has a very powerful consequence. You will be forcing Senpai to watch powerlessly as his childhood friend chokes to death right beside him. Osana? Are you okay? What's wrong? Hey! Do you need any help? Osana! Oh my god! Osana! Answer me! Wake up! Please! Wake up! Don't do this! Oh god! This can't be happening! No! There is... something that I don't think I've ever mentioned before in any of my videos. It's very important, but it just never came up until now. As you know, Yandere-chan has a sanity meter that goes down whenever she harms another person. However, Yandere-chan isn't the only character in the game with a sanity meter. Senpai also has a sanity meter. Senpai's sanity will take damage whenever he discovers something disturbing. Bloody weapons and pools of blood will deal a small amount of damage to Senpai's sanity. Discovering a corpse will deal a lot more damage. Learning that his best friend or sister are dead will also harm his sanity. However, the most damaging experience Senpai can possibly go through is to witness his best friend or sister dying right in front of his eyes as he is powerless to help them. Yandere Simulator will have multiple endings. The ending that you will get will be determined by numerous different factors. How many people you killed is just one of those factors. Who you killed is much more important. So is how you killed them and whether or not Senpai was traumatized by the experience. The exact way that you eliminate your rivals will shape Senpai's personality. If you sabotage all of his interactions with women over the course of 10 weeks, he will grow to dislike women. If you make every woman in his life fall for another boy, he will become lonely and worry that nobody will ever love him. If you kill every woman who comes into his life, he will begin to believe that he is cursed. These are just three possible outcomes. I won't say anything else about the game's various endings, so that the endings will come as a surprise when you encounter them. Senpai's sanity will have a lot of influence over the type of ending that you get after you have eliminated all of your rivals. If you subject Senpai to too many traumatic experiences over the course of the game, and damage his sanity beyond a certain threshold, you won't get a pleasant ending at all. I wonder... What if Senpai was driven to the very edge of sanity, and then he learned that you were the one who forced him to watch his sister die? What would he do?
In the future, I may decide to give the player a way to repair Senpai's sanity after it has been damaged. For example, leaving notes in his locker or leaving gifts on his desk. This would allow the player to steer away from a bad ending, and would also help the protagonist to feel like she is more than just an emotionless violent psychopath. This is a relatively new idea, and there are still a lot of things that I have to consider before I can promise to include it in the game. In addition to adding new voice acting and new animations, a lot of other work also needs to be done in order to make rivals feel special and unique. For example, Senpai should react differently to the sight of a rival's corpse than the sight of a stranger's corpse. This is just one of the many ways that I want to make rivals feel as distinct as possible from all of the other students at school. I thought that I'd be able to make much faster progress with Osana, but over the past two weeks, I only managed to implement her Monday interactions with Senpai. This is because, as I implemented Osana, I thought of so many different ways to improve the game. Allowing Yandere-chan to hide behind cover and peek at Osana and Senpai while eavesdropping on them was an idea that only occurred to me about ten days ago. The same goes for the locked shed, locked cabinet, the pickpocketing minigame, the gardening club members, etc. I don't think it will always take me two weeks to implement a couple of interactions between Senpai and a rival girl. A lot of the code that I wrote over the past two weeks can be reused for future events, so it should be easier and less time-consuming to set up her Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday events. With all of that said, it's still quite difficult to predict exactly how long it will take to implement the rest of Osana's interaction events. Her Befriend Betray storyline, her confession cutscene, her matchmaking suitor, a routine that guarantees she will never be alone, and all of the polish required to make her feel special and different from all the other students, and all of the other things that I may be forgetting to mention. I previously estimated that it would only take one more month to add Osana into the game, but now that I'm thinking about all the work that'll be required, it honestly seems like it's going to take at least two months. Hopefully, after watching this video, you have a better idea of how much work is required to put a rival character into the game. Hopefully, this will make it easier for you to be patient and understanding while I work on Osana. Today, I will be releasing a new build of the game that has a bunch of bug fixes, but no Osana. She's not ready yet. In previous builds of the game, I made it possible for the player to summon Osana by changing one line of text in a file outside of the game. Starting in this build, I'm not going to allow the player to summon Osana so easily. I don't really want anyone to see a buggy, half-finished Osana. I'm sure that somebody will manage to mod the game so that they can see Osana, but don't be surprised if she's a buggy mess at this point in time. It's quite rude to peek on a girl while she's getting ready. Huh? Baka. Now you're all caught up with everything that I've been working on over the past two weeks. In January, I will continue to make progress with Osana. Last year, January was a very big month for me. I released a lot of videos about important subjects. This year, I might release some follow-up videos to give you an update on some of the biggest issues from last year. I'll try not to let these videos delay my progress with Osana. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator. Yandere Dev, Yandere Dev! <sighs> What is it this time, Midori? You said the gardening shed was locked. 
But there's no lock on the door. Well, that's because the game's not finished yet. I don't have all the 3D models that I need. So for now, you just have to pretend that there's a lock on the door, okay? <laughs>